steps to getting connected. Hi, I'm Janice, a Create Young Consultant. Hi, I'm Cara from Next Step Plus at YFS. Hi, I'm Eli, a Transition Officer. Today we're talking about supporting care experience young people in Queensland in accessing important ID documents and empowering them to get connected to key services and networks. There's also a handy poster that goes along with this video, so make sure you check it out for a link. Sometimes the process of getting ID documents and getting connected to services can be challenging and confusing. For example, you can't get Centrelink unless you have a bank account, and you can't get a bank account if you don't have your ID documents. Come alongside the young person and support them through these essential 10 steps. Side note, lots of young people don't have Wi-Fi, so make sure the young person knows where they can get some free Wi-Fi access. Getting my bank account was easy. My carer helped me with that one. Um, driver's license, my CSO helps me with. My main issue was Centrelink. Um, going from service to service and taking forever to get things processed and getting a hold of them was also really hard. 10 important steps in supporting a care experienced young person to get key documents and get connected to services. One, birth certificate. Often the birth certificate is held at the Child Safety Service Centre. Otherwise, young people can apply for the birth certificate online. We can go to the court registry office to apply in person. We have included the links below. Two, Medicare card. When a young person is becoming independent, they need their own Medicare card, rather than being associated with their carers or another person's card. To do this, go with a young person to the closest Centrelink office and complete the Medicare paperwork. If they already have a MyGov account, they can apply for a replacement card online. If you or they don't yet have a MyGov account, listen along for the next step. Three, MyGov. They need a MyGov account to access personal information on services like NDIS, Medicare, Australian Tax Office, Centrelink and other government services. To set up a MyGov account, they need an email address and a phone number, a mobile phone number that is. They require linking codes to connect to each service to their MyGov account. This part is very important, but just a heads up, patience is needed. Four, student ID. It's a good idea to encourage the young person to get their student ID through their school. While you're at it, help the young person get a go card, encourage them to take their school ID and go to the train station to buy this. Five, photo ID. Support your young person to get a photo identification card for the Department of Transport. They will need to take in their birth certificate, Medicare card, and a proof of address. Six, tax file number. To get a tax file number or TFN as it's referred to, support the young person with the online form first. You then need to print out the summary, reference number, and encourage them to take their ID to the closest post office to process. Seven, bank account. Barriers to opening a bank account may include needing a guardian signature. Some banks, but not all, require an adult to sign for an account. This can be very complex. They need to make sure that you have all the correct ID, including photo ID, birth certificate, Medicare, tax file number, and proof of address. Eight, Centrelink. When I went to Centrelink, um, the things that I struggle with is having no support around me. I had support for the first initial um, getting onto Centrelink, but after that, I was kind of left in the dark. And what would have made it better is having someone around me, even if I'm making like a phone call to Centrelink, to have someone sit next to me and help me and support me through the process. In order to get any payments from the government, like youth allowance, job seeker, or parenting payments, the young person will need to set up a Centrelink account. To do this, they will need to make an appointment by calling. Support the young person to download the Centrelink app for future use. Make sure you go with the young person and ensure they've got a birth certificate, photo ID, proof of residency, Medicare card and bank account details. They will also need a letter from Child Safety confirming the level of independence. The rest of the claim can be done online, including things like income reports and nominee forms so that child safety worker can inquire on behalf of the young person if they want. Nine, housing. A CSO should submit a joint action plan with the housing application along with the young person's ID and their child protection order. They can list up to six locations. 
just make sure you take into consideration their needs. For example, do they need an extra room for shared support? Work alongside the young person to fill out that documentation and then the young person can sign the application. Remember the wait can sometimes take a really long time and an application does not guarantee housing. But be ready, they may need to go to Housing Service Centre with short notice to preview a property. Also, ensure the details are up to date on their application. 10. Files and Living Care Documents uh, My experience with accessing my records and information is I didn't find out about a lot of information until after I had left care. Um, and with that, I have tried to access my information but have faced a lot of barriers and obstacles trying to get there. It's important to support young people in accessing their story, information and files. Young people have a right to request and access their information at an appropriate level at any point of their care journey. Before young people leave care, support them by doing a leaving care report. This contains key documents where they've lived, school achievements, medical history and cultural information. It's really important in empowering young people in their own life story. Young people can apply for their files through Right to Information. This can take a while and documents will often be redacted, so encourage young people to get support when they do look through their files. Young people can also access a smaller document of key info through the Time in Care report. It's important to support Aboriginal and or Torres Strait Islander young people to get their proof of Aboriginality before they leave care. Otherwise, they can go through services like LinkUp to help with this. While these steps help set up a young person towards success, there are lots of things we haven't covered. We haven't talked about the NDIS. We haven't explored supporting a young person to stay connected to culture, study, utilities, QCAT application. These are all separate processes that are really, really important, but we don't have time to explore in this video. Talk to the transition officer, your colleagues, or Next Step Plus about this. Also make sure you check out the Sortly app, Go Your Own Way kit, and other transition to adulthood resources at Create's website. Accessing these services are so important because when I experienced homelessness, um, I felt in a state of panic and I didn't know half the services that were available or how to do stuff on my own. And um, showing kids and young people this information could be the difference between them being in a stable home or if they're living alone, um, having the information and the access to be able to live comfortably.